Okay, everyone. I think uh, let's uh, make a start. So it's the first lecture of semester, so people might be coming in. Okay. Uh, did anybody manage to scan the QR codes? People had some success. But okay, great. Um, I will put the QR code up again at the end um, of the lecture if you didn't get a chance to uh, scan it uh, to start with. Okay. So uh, let's uh, let's get going. Okay. What's the uh, the plan? Uh, for today, okay. So I wanted to start uh, just with this absolutely beautiful picture of the planet Jupiter. Does anybody know what is special about the planet Jupiter today of all days? Did anybody? Yes, uh, yes. Some people at the back, yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. They were in here. That's so today, this very day, it's the closest that the planet Jupiter has been in uh, 59 years. Okay, so I thought that was quite cool. Also, we had this very recent, absolutely beautiful um, infrared image of Jupiter uh, from uh, JWST, okay? So absolutely beautiful image. So during this year, we're going to be learning about some of the physics uh, that has gone into this. So later in the semester, we're going to be learning a bit about um, the infrared lights that this image uh, is made of. And later in the year, we're going to be learning some, ab some stuff about the orbits of the planets. So we've got some of that to look forward to, OK? Uh, but what's the plan uh, for today? So today's the kind of intro session. I've called it kind of lecture zero. So the basic plan today is to kind of tell you a bit about myself, tell you a bit about the course, um, and I'd like to find out a bit about you guys, OK? So the kind of meat of what we're going to be doing today, it's this bit here, the about the course kind of stuff here. So um, we're going to find out you know, what the course schedule is, a bit about the course assessment, um, and some of the materials that you're going to need for the course. Okay? Um, but I'd kind of like to put that in a bit of a sort of sandwich today. So um, I'd like to tell you a bit of stuff about physics in general and how we're going to approach physics in this course here, OK? So uh, some of the habits and skills that are going to be useful for physics. And also some of the kind of big goals. You know, where are we going uh, with this course, OK? What's the big picture? Uh, what's the kind of direction there? So I'd like to find out a bit about uh, you guys, some of the things you're interested in, uh, some of the things you like doing, OK? Uh, but I'd like to start by telling you guys just a few things uh, about myself, OK? So I think it does help if we get to know each other a bit, OK? So uh, first we'll start with, uh, please uh, call me Ed. Um, some people might prefer, you know, Dr. Last Name or whatever, but please just call me Ed. That's going to be great, OK? So the first sort of few things I'd like to start with, I'd um, like to tell you a bit about myself, some of the things uh, that I've done, um, and also some things that I like, OK? So partly uh, just for fun, like I said, it does help if we get to know each other a bit, OK? Uh, but there's also some serious points that I'd like to make about that, OK? So that's the kind of plan for today. So uh, we've got a kind of mix of people doing various different subjects. Um, so I um, started my uh, sort of university career uh, with a physics degree. Where's the people on the, um, are doing uh, the physics foundation year? OK, great. So that's kind of where I started um, at university. I started um, on a uh, physics degree. Um, and um, one of the kind of most exciting things that I did during my degree, um, something I might tell you guys a bit more about, uh, something that you might want to think about later on in your degree, is I did a summer internship, OK? So this is a great kind of experience, whatever your subject, you can spend a summer doing something kind of fun. So I spent my summer uh, of the third year of my degree when I was a physics student. Um, here, um, we visited this place in uh, Livingston, Louisiana. Has anybody uh, seen a picture of this before, seen anything like this? So this is actually a um, gravitational wave detector. So we're going to learn about some of the physics uh, that goes into this uh, later in the semester. Um, so it's in um, Louisiana in the USA. 
Uh, these arms of what's called an interferometer, so these are four kilometers long each. So it's an absolutely huge uh, physics experiment. So the summer of my third year as a physics student, um, I was sort of involved in this project. And it was one of the most exciting summers of my life. So whichever degree you're studying, whether it's physics, we've got engineers, other sciences, you've got a lot of exciting opportunities ahead of you. Okay? There's a lot of exciting things that you can get involved with. Okay? So after my um, undergraduate physics degree, so my first physics degree, uh, I did a PhD. Um, so at that stage, you kind of specialize a bit more. So I focused on um, astrophysics. So I was very lucky because I got to go observing. I got to visit a couple of uh, telescopes. So um, I got to visit this extraordinary place here. So this is the summit of uh, Mauna Kea in Hawaii. So I got to visit here a few times during my PhD for some observations uh, on this telescope over here. So this is called the uh, Subaru telescope. Um, and again, it was kind of very exciting, really exciting time and a great opportunity to get to do that. Okay, so studying physics, studying science, science studying engineering, uh, you can often kind of, you get to be involved with some kind of very exciting experiments, get to visit some very fun places, okay? So after my PhD, um, for a few years, I was working as a uh, researcher, okay? So researching uh, cosmology. So I actually spent a couple of years living in Australia, which was a great experience, okay? Um, so this is the uh, biggest um, optical telescope in Australia, the AAT, okay? Um, so I got to do some observing on there a few times. So really extraordinary place. And the night sky in Australia really is absolutely extraordinary. So it really kind of does look like this. You can see uh, the Milky Way all across the sky here, and then the Magellanic clouds over there. So it really is extraordinarily beautiful. And I felt kind of really lucky uh, when I was a student, when I was a researcher, that I got to visit some really fun observatories. Uh, so now um, I'm the uh, lecturer here at UEA for the uh, foundation year. Uh, before I started lecturing at UEA, um, I was lecturing uh, at a university in the United States. So we've just had a welcome week at UEA. Uh, you might have seen some sort of fun things, you know, out on uh, the lawns, you know, we had some like circus tents, that kind of stuff. So when I was in the States um, in Welcome Week, they did have stuff on the quad. Um, oh, come in, come in. That's all right, that's all right. Come in, come in, grab a seat. All right. Uh, so where was it? Yeah. So at Welcome Week in the States, uh, we had uh, Black Hawk helicopters. Uh, so it was actually a um, military university. So some of the students were um, army cadets uh, while they were studying. So the first week of every semester, uh, the United States Army, they landed these Black Hawk helicopters on the quad and they took the army cadets uh, for a flight. So that was a kind of bit of a new thing um, and quite an exciting way to start the uh, semester, something you don't see every day. So that's just a kind of little bit about uh, my kind of experience, some of the things uh, that I've done and been involved with uh, before um, arriving here. Does anybody have any questions about any of that for the time being? Anything you want to ask? That's all right. So I'd like to just spend a couple of slides telling you guys about some things uh, that I like, uh, partly uh, just for fun. Uh, like I said, it does help if we get to know each other a bit. You know, we're going to be with each other all year. Um, and also, there are some serious points uh, that I'd like to make about these. They're not just for fun, okay? So, uh, now that I, I'm in UEA, uh, one of the things I like to do for fun, uh, one of my favorite shows, it's uh, the Orville. Uh, got here. Does anyone else like the Orville here? Any other fans of the Orville? Oh, it's such a great show. If you, ha if you haven't watched Orville, you've got to watch it. It's such a great show. I just, I just love it. Um, so, it's made by um, Seth MacFarlane. Uh, the, the, um, family Guy. Uh, I, I just love it. It's such a great show. This is their, their ship here. Um, so it's a great show all around. There's 
fantastic stories, great characters. But something I really like about the show is the astrophysics in the show. Uh, it's just amazingly accurate. It's really kind of very uh, authentic. <clears throat> so the show, um, I guess you could say it's a bit like kind of Star Trek, the next generation, or something like that. Uh, but the ship, it's actually inspired uh, by real physics here. So uh, the design of the ship, they've got these kind of arches at the back of the ship for what they call quantum drive. But the shape of that uh, is actually based uh, on some real physics here. Um, so it's their quantum drive. And the physics uh, is actually based on what's called the Alcubierre metric. So this is some real physics, uh, so a real proposal for how you could have a spaceship traveling faster than the speed of light. And it's kind of inspired the design of the spaceship. So I thought that was really cool. And if you're studying physics, you can learn about some of this kind of stuff about what we mean by a metric, I guess more towards the end of your degree. But I thought that was really cool in a uh, TV show. Um, and then in this episode, uh, the ship, these kind of green bubbles here, um, it was stuck in some dark matter, but not just any kind of dark matter. It was actually stuck in a, what's called axion dark matter, uh, which is a genuine hypothetical kind of dark matter particle. So I was like, wow, this is, this is just amazing. So one of the first papers that I was involved with when I was a PhD student, we were actually looking at the physics of axion dark matter. So when a TV show was talking about this, I was like, wow, this is, this is just really cool. Uh, so like I said, it's a great show. Um, if you're not watching it already, I'd really highly recommend it. And the astrophysics in it, it's just fantastic. So if you're interested in astrophysics and you want to kind of get introduced to some cool astrophysics ideas, uh, definitely uh, check out The Orville. Uh, like I said, it's just a great show. Uh, so that's one slide on uh, something that I like. Um, I also um, I listen to a lot of music. So um, you guys might find that if you're, um, if you're studying sometimes, I find it helps have a bit of classical music on. I find that kind of helps my focus. Um, but otherwise, uh, my favorite band um, is actually uh, Queen. Um, do you have any other Queen fans here? Yeah, OK. So it's my favorite band. This is actually a flyer from their very first concert uh, when they were all uh, students. So there's actually a kind of serious point that I want to make about this. So if we take a look at the members of the band. So we've got John Deacon, Freddie Mercury, Roger Taylor, and Brian May. So obviously they're all focusing on musical kind of things. But they were all students when they started Queen. Um, and if we take a look at what they were studying, it's actually quite interesting because you might presume, well, maybe they were all studying music or something like that. But it wasn't the case. Let's have a look. So, John Deacon was studying electronics. Freddie Mercury was studying art and design. Roger Taylor was actually studying dentistry. His plan was going to be a dentist. Uh, and Brian May, uh, famously, uh, was studying physics. OK. So there's a couple of points I'd like to make about this. So when I look at what the subjects they were studying, it's actually not too dissimilar to the subjects that you guys are all studying in this foundation year. So um, <clears throat> who's studying engineering or electronics? Where's the engineers? Yes, OK. Oh, wow, quite a lot of engineers, OK. So <clears throat> I don't think we're going to have any students studying art and design degrees. Has anybody done any art or design, or maybe they do it for fun? OK, a few people. All right. Now, I don't think we have any dentists, but there are people studying kind of biology-related courses, biochemistry, something like that. Where's the kind of, OK, a few biochemists. And then, of course, we have some physicists, physicists here. So the first point I want to make is that there's actually more in common with practicing and studying music uh, with these subjects than most people realize. And this is a bit of a theme that I'd like to kind of develop today. Um, and throughout the year, okay, because a lot of the skills and the habits 
that you need to be really good at music are also similar kind of skills and habits that you need to do engineering or physics or any other science. So the other serious point that I want to make about this is that I think one of the reasons why Queen is such a great band and so innovative is because they had this extraordinarily diverse background, so a really interesting range of expertise, of science and art, and it all kind of goes into the mix. And I think that's a really important thing, okay, that a diversity of backgrounds and a diversity of experiences and creativity is really important when we're studying uh, any science, especially physics, okay? And I think that's something that I'd really like to develop with you guys throughout the year because, like I said, I think the range of experience of you guys, it's not too dissimilar to this kind of range of experience. So I'm not saying that maybe necessarily we're going to go and form a cool rock band, but hopefully we can kind of approach physics in our own way. And I'm sure all of you guys are going to go on to do fantastic things, okay? Maybe not necessarily a rock band, but I'm sure it's going to be very cool, okay? So that's all I wanted to say about uh, myself and some uh, things that I like. Um, so I thought it might just be a good moment if anybody has any questions, anything they want to ask for the time being. Okay. All right then. So let's move on to uh, the slightly more serious stuff for today. So some of the, um, the course information, some of that kind of stuff. Okay. So the, the kind of the course schedule uh, that we're going to be following. Okay. So I've divided it into two things here. Okay. So we have some essential things that you really have to come to every week. Okay and some optional things uh, which you can kind of uh, come along to um, as you feel is necessary, okay? So the first essential thing is, of course, the lectures, okay? So they're at Mondays at 4, so same time as here, and Thursdays at 11, okay? So we're going to be in the Science uh, Lecture Theatre, so Psi 0.31, and this is going to be the time when we get new concepts and new material, okay? So I want to emphasize that they're really not going to be lectures in the sense that it's not just going to be me, you know, monologuing for a whole hour, okay? So this first talk of the year, um, it's going to be the, first, the, the, the time when I'm really kind of speaking the most, okay? So for most of the lectures, they're going to be a lot more interactive. You guys are going to be getting a lot more involved, okay? So I'll say a bit more about that uh, later on, okay? So the other really important piece of the puzzle are workshops, okay? So we're going to have them on Friday afternoons, okay? So they're timetable for four and five. Um, if you look on your um, schedules, you'll be in one or the other of those, okay? So half the group comes along to one and half comes along to the other. So that's in the new science building. And what that is about is it's a time for collaborating, working on questions, going over what we've learned in the week, okay? So we're going to have some new stuff on Mondays and Thursdays, and then Fridays to kind of put it all together, okay? So on the Friday workshops, we're also going to have a challenge question every week, okay? So this is a question a bit more interesting, slightly more difficult than we're going to cover in the foundation year. Um, but if you're feeling confident with the material from the week and you want to kind of stretch things out a bit, definitely think about giving the challenge question a go. Okay, it's going to make things more interesting. Okay, so as well as the essential stuff, there's a couple of optional things as well that we're going to have every week. So the first one, we're going to have a drop-in help session, okay? And this is right after the first lecture on Monday, okay? So right after, same uh, time, same place, okay? Mondays at 5, okay? So the idea here is it's really you guys' time to ask anything that you might have, 
work through anything, or, or if you just want to use the time to read or work on questions, okay? <clears throat> so um, it's not going to be like a kind of um, PowerPoint kind of situation. Um, it's really a kind of optional kind of brainstorming, kind of hack workshop sort of session. If you like, <clears throat> we can go through things um, on the blackboard. And by blackboard, I mean, you know, real blackboard, not the kind of that online blackboard business. Like I said, <clears throat> if you just want to use that time to maybe <clears throat> do some reading, work on your own questions, that's absolutely fine as well, okay? So as well as the drop-in help session, um, I also have office hours every week, okay? So this is an hour of the week that I set aside. You can come along. You don't have to come along for the whole time or, you know, on the hour you can just come and go as you like, okay? So they're at Thursdays at 3.30, okay? So the idea is it's kind of after the, the Thursday lecture. So I actually hold my office hours at Ziggy's coffee shop on the street. Do you guys know where Ziggy's is, the, the coffee shop? They do pretty nice coffee there as well. So um, I kind of go along, have a coffee. Um, so the idea is it's a bit more kind of open-ended than the help session, okay? So certainly if you have questions about the lecture, questions about the reading, anything like that, you can <clears throat> certainly ask about that. Uh, but you could really ask anything you like. So any questions about physics, anything about university, careers, <clears throat> maybe support, maybe anything else. Um, also, it doesn't just have to be questions. Please do tell me <clears throat> if you found something interesting. Maybe you found a website that's really helpful. Maybe you found <clears throat> a YouTube channel that's really helpful. Maybe just something that you're really interested in. Okay? Please do let me know. If you like, I can show it in lectures if it's going to be useful for the other students. Okay? So it's not just for questions. So please do come and come along, or if, even if you just want to kind of say hi, and let me know what you're interested in. Okay? But I think the, the kind of thing I'll emphasize with this is we've got these essential things, the workshop and the lectures. And the idea is that right after the lectures, whether it's the drop-in help session or the office hours, you can come along with any questions and really consolidate what we've done in the lectures. That's the plan for how things are going to work, okay? All right. So that's all I want to say for the time being about the course <coughs> uh, schedule. Um, the other thing I need to tell you guys today is a bit about the course assessment. So how is the module assessed, okay? So there's two pieces to the assessment. So the main piece is we're going to have an exam, which is 70% of the mark for the course, and a piece of coursework, which is 30%, okay? Um, so the exam, it's going to be in the January assessment period, okay? So we'll get an exact date um, closer to the time. But it's in January, so you've got that break to do some revision and then come back and do the exam. It's going to be 80 minutes long. Um, a calculator is going to be uh, provided, um, and you can bring one sheet of um, A4 notes, okay? A double-sided handwritten. Uh, if handwritten is going to be an issue, uh, please do let us know, and we can work something out, okay? Um, and we're going to have a practice exam before, okay? So at the end of the semester, before everybody goes away, we'll have a practice exam, okay? So the coursework, um, it's going to be a um, lab report. Um, so same kind of idea. We're going to have a practice lab, so a, a formative lab, halfway through the semester, okay? So in week six. And I'll tell you guys more about the coursework uh, nearer the time, okay? So overall, so your marks from the coursework and the exam, uh, so you need to get 40% overall to pass the uh, module, okay? So I think the thing I want to emphasize is we're going to be really well prepared, okay? So everybody who engages with the course, comes along to the lectures, comes along to the workshops, works through the questions, does really well, okay? 
Um, so you, we're going to be really well prepared, and I really hope it's not going to be like a big stressful kind of situation for anybody, okay? So following on from that, I just want to emphasize, you know, follow your curiosity, okay? If there's something in the lecture you think, oh, hey, wow, that's, that's really interesting. You know, follow your curiosity, look it up, read more about it. Maybe we can chat about it in an office hour, okay? You've got plenty of scope to follow your curiosity, okay? I know sometimes it can be a kind of lot of pressure and it's got to be A stars all around. Um, so I really hope people kind of don't feel that there's too much pressure that you can't follow your curiosity like that, okay? Does anybody have any questions about the assessment stuff for now? I know sometimes we get a bit more questions. Okay, so you don't need too much stuff um, for this module, okay? Um, there's just a couple of things that you need in terms of um, course materials, okay? So um, the first thing I'd suggest, I really would encourage everybody, I think one of the best kind of pieces of technology for learning physics, it's just a paper notebook, okay? So um, I'd encourage everybody to get a paper notebook. I know a lot of people, um, they like using tablets or something. I think you can't beat sometimes a paper notebook. Um, you're, I'd also really encourage everybody to get a real calculator, okay? Don't just use the calculator on your phone, okay? So when you go into the exam in January, this is going to be the kind of exam, so the kind of calculator that you're going to have, okay? So a calculator is going to be provided in the exam. You won't be able to take your own calculator along. So it's a Casio, I'm sure you're all familiar with the, the FX85 GTX calculator, okay? So that's what you're going to have in the exam, okay? So a bit like this one, okay? So if you don't already have a real calculator and you're going to go out and buy one, I'd say get one like this, okay? Because then it's going to be exactly the same as in the exam, okay? Um, in the practice lab we're going to have halfway through the semester, we'll have these calculators there. So if you don't want to buy one, you can get a bit of practice with these calculators in the lab before the exam, okay? But I really would encourage you, if you don't already have a calculator, um, it really is very helpful to have a real calculator uh, and not use the calculator on your phone because um, if you're anything like me, what I find if I need to do a calculation and I use my phone, I'm like, okay, I'll just work out this quick calculation right after I've like checked the entire internet, okay? So um, if you get a real calculator, there's just not that distraction there, okay? Um, so if you are gonna buy one, I'd say get one like this, then it's gonna be exactly the same as in the exam, okay? So that's the calculator. The only other thing that you're gonna need for the course is this textbook here. So this is the textbook we're gonna be using all year, okay? So it's just called physics, okay, which kind of does make it a bit difficult if you're just like searching for like physics textbook because obviously there's, there's lots of physics textbooks. They kind of should have given it a more specific name really. Uh, but it's written by this guy here, okay. This is what it looks like. Um, so if you like, you can um, buy a copy of the textbook. We're going to be using it all year, okay. Or there are plenty of copies in the library as well. So if you go down to the library, you can get yourself a copy of this, okay? Roughly speaking, we're gonna do the first half of the textbook this semester and the second half of the textbook uh, next semester is the plan. We're not gonna do every single chapter, uh, but that's the basic plan, okay? The big picture I kinda wanna emphasize with the textbooks, the calculators, the whole thing, is when I'm kind of doing some studying and wanting to learn some new physics, I'd really encourage you to kind of go into airplane mode, okay? Uh, really kind of go offline. I think you really, sometimes when you just need to focus, you can't be just having a kind of pad of paper and the textbook and a real calculator, and then you just kind of keep out all of those distractions, okay? I think that's really important when you're learning new physics concepts, okay? I've got a bit more to say about that later on, but for the time being, 
that's all I wanted to say about that, okay? Let me just get a bit of water over here. Okay, so jumping off from here, if you look at this textbook, okay, and it's just called physics, okay, I think you could very easily think that this textbook is physics, okay? And something that I really want to emphasize this semester and today is that physics, it's much more than just this textbook, okay? And it's really not a textbook subject, okay? So I just wanted to spend a couple of slides kind of thinking about that point in a bit more detail, okay? So let's take a look at this picture over here. Has anybody seen this image before? Who's seen this image before? Okay, does anybody know what it's an image of? Oh, uh, yeah. It's the shadow of a black hole. Yeah, exactly. So it's an image of a black hole. Does anybody want to put some more details on that? Yeah. Uh, I think they can be seen from several different telescopes or if you get a planet-wide telescope. Absolutely right. Fantastic, okay. So it was taken by um, what's called the Event Horizon Telescope, but it's not just <clears throat> one telescope. It's a collection of many radio telescopes all around the world. And they process it together to get this extraordinary image of a black hole, okay. And I think it's one of the most impressive images to come out of physics in the past few years. Do we have a question back there? Yes, very good. Do you know what they took the second one of? Exactly right, okay. Did everybody hear that? So since taking this image, the same collaboration has also made a similar image of the black hole in our own Milky Way galaxy, which is just extraordinary, okay, to have real images of these black holes. Um, are there any other questions about this image before we go on to the next slide? Those are some, some great questions. We might have some more time for questions um, at the end, okay. So I'm really glad that some of you have already seen this image, know a bit about it, okay? What I want to ask you next is, so some of you have seen this image. Um, who's seen this image? How many of you have seen this one before? Has anybody seen this one? Oh, a few people, but, but not too many, okay? So this image was um, posted about the same time uh, well, as that first image of the black hole was released, okay? So it's, uh, it was posted by uh, this person here, so Katie Bauman, okay, who was one of the researchers involved with processing this image, okay? And there's a few points I want to make about this. I just think this is a fantastic picture, okay? I think if I wanted to say in one picture, what is physics really all about? I think it's all here in this picture. What, how's physics done? And what is physics really about here, okay? So if you have a look on her laptop, can you guys see this over here? She's working on some code, and that's the image of the black hole that we just saw, okay? So if you take a look here, there's one, two, three, four, five laptops on the table, okay? So they've all got together with their laptops. They're all working together on working out this picture of the black hole. Uh, they've got some equations and diagrams on the blackboard and some more stuff on this whiteboard over here. And this is really how physics is done, okay? It's not a textbook subject. It's a kind of really collaborative and active kind of thing where you get some amazing results, okay? So when this picture was taken, um, Katie Bowman was a PhD student, okay? So if you are thinking about maybe studying some more physics after your first degree, you really can become involved with some absolutely extraordinary things um, if, you do, if you do a uh, physics PhD. So like I said, I think if we just had kind of one picture which exemplifies, you know, what physics is all about, I think it's this one, okay? The other thing I want to emphasize with this is you might be thinking, okay, well, where are we kind of going with this module? Where are we kind of going with our whole degree, okay? And I think, in a nutshell, I'd say what we're going for is that when you've graduated with your physics degree, you're gonna be ready to work like this, okay? So 
maybe it's not necessarily to make an image of a black hole, but for whatever is important to you, you can go along, you can open up your laptop, you can work through the math, you can work through the code, and you can get done what you want to do, okay? So just to kind of emphasize a few points about this, I've got a little bit about what physics is not and how physics is done, okay? So like I said, okay, uh, that, that's the other important point I wanted to make, okay? Physics, it's not about memorizing equations, okay? So quite often people say to me, oh, I can't do physics because I don't have a good memory, okay? People often think physics is about memorizing lots of equations. It's really not about memorizing equations, okay? Um, and it's not a textbook subject, okay? So you can buy physics textbooks, but that doesn't mean it's, it's a textbook subject, okay? It really is a kind of very active research uh, sort of field like that, okay? That you guys are gonna uh, be a part of, okay? So I think if I kind of tried to describe in one bullet point, I'd say, you know, physics, it's about understanding, developing, applying, sharing, and testing ideas about how the universe works, okay? So it's about much more than memorizing equations, okay? Um, so as we saw in the picture, physics, it's active, okay? And it's collaborative. So it's not just the kind of individual thing where you're kind of trying to figure out equations by yourself, okay? Um, so physics, it is hard work, but hopefully it's fun as well, okay? And I think you kind of got a sense of that in the picture there. And these are things that I really hope we can develop uh, this semester, okay, uh, in this module. So I mentioned a bit about how physics is done, okay? So I just wanted to show you guys that same kind of thing, but in more of a kind of equation, okay? So in a kind of equation, so you kind of start with your laptop, and you very often, in a session like that, you kind of have some pizza and maybe some donuts. Uh, so very often, there's also quite a lot of coffee involved. You might kind of just spend all weekend coding stuff, figuring things out. And then you end up with, you know, a picture of a black hole or whatever amazing thing that you're working on, okay? So just to reiterate, where we're kind of going with your whole degree is... We want you guys to be ready to get involved with work like this, okay? So if you're thinking, why do we have to do a coding module? Why are we working through things on a blackboard? It's so that we're gonna be ready for something like this, okay? I think that's the big picture of where we're going with your degree, okay? And like I said, you don't have to be making an image of a black hole. Whatever you feel is important for you. Maybe you wanna get involved with fusion research or climate change or biophysics or whatever really matters to you, okay? We want you guys to be ready there, okay? So I mentioned a few slides ago that there's more similarities that, um, than people often think about between physics and something like music, okay? And that's something I wanna reiterate here, okay? So that kind of session where people get together, open up their laptops and code and work through stuff on a blackboard, it's a bit like a jam session if you're a musician where everybody comes together and you start making some new music, okay? So you can create some cool new music, but you have to have done your homework, okay? So you have to know your scales and your rhythms and your riffs, all that stuff that goes into it, okay? Um, and it's a kind of similar sort of situation with physics, okay? That that's how physics is done. It's done collaboratively but you have to make sure that you know, you, you're familiar with the code and the math and the physics and all that stuff, that stuff that goes into it, okay? Does anyone have anything they want to ask for the time being? Yeah. Yeah, so the library, oh, the question was, is the book available online, okay? Um, so the library has electronic copies, so if you go onto the library, you should be able to find um, electronic copies of there. They do have um, real copies, okay? Um, I think you can't be just sitting down and kind of reading a, a physical copy sometimes, but they do have electronic copies there. Um, any other questions for the time being? 
Okay, so I wanted to say a little bit about how we're kind of going to get some of this um, kind of active, collaborative sense of physics uh, this semester and in the lectures, okay? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a thing called um, point solutions. Um, has anybody been told about this for other modules, used it before, anything like that? So it's basically a kind of app for uh, multiple choice questions here. So you can get it on your phone. Um, if you scan this QR code, you can get the uh, Android version. And if you scan this one, you can get the iPhone version. So I'll give you guys a bit of time to, to get that scanned, see if you get the, the app downloaded. So who, can you kind of let me know if you've managed to get the app downloaded and put the code in? Has anybody, and you're in? Okay. So um, the last few things I'd like to do today, just try a couple of quick questions. Because like I said, I'd like to get to know you guys a bit, see what you guys are interested in, um, and just get to know you guys a bit. So um, let's try this question here, okay? So I'm quite interested. Do you guys do any of these activities here? So maybe some people do some music, or you're learning a language. Maybe you do a bit of art, or you're involved in a bit of sport there. So I think let's take a look. I want to see what everybody is up to here. Oh, OK. So a lot of people do sport, and we have some people doing music and language and art. Uh, what sports do people do? Yeah? Boxing. Oh, boxing. Oh, wow. Great. Um, other sports then? Yeah? Running. Running. Great. Any other sports? Golf. Golf. OK, great. And at the back? Oh, gymnastics. I was, I was kind of hoping someone did gymnastics. OK, great. <coughs> um, what's, what's your favorite apparatus? Floor. Floor. And what? And vault? Bars. OK. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Any other sports? OK, I, I want to add some art. What kind of art do people do? OK, uh, uh, languages. Which languages? <laughs> Who's doing some languages? Yes. What? Which language? French. Great. Any other languages? Yep. Italian. Italian. Great. And what about music? Is there anybody who's doing music? Who's doing some music? Yes. What, what music do you do? Do you do an instrument or something? Or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Guitar, great. And what do you do? Yeah, guitar as well. Guitar, okay. You get guitar. Piano, ukulele. Yeah, Piano, okay, ukulele. Very interesting. Any other, and, yep. So, opera singer. Oh, wow, fantastic. What, what, what's your voice? Soprano. Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. Any other singers? So, I, I really encourage everyone. If you can, I know sometimes when you start university, these things can kind of get a bit <laughs> squeezed out, okay? But whichever of these you do, I'd really encourage you, if you can, to keep them going, okay? Because like I said before, a lot of the skills and the habits that you need to be successful in any of these are very similar to the kind of skills and habits that you need to be successful in physics, okay? So I'll say a bit more about this later, but I thank you all for putting that in. It's great to hear a kind of really fantastic range of things that you're doing. I'd certainly like to hear more about that, okay? So um, I've got another question I'd like to ask you guys, okay? I've got the thing. Here we go, okay. So um, what kind of learner are you, okay? So you might have heard there's kind of these sort of different uh, learning styles here, okay? Maybe you feel like you're more one than the other, okay? Which kind of uh, learning style do you feel kind of works for you here? Okay, let's take a look. I'm curious to see what everybody thinks here. All right, so not so much as the reading and writing and the hearing. A few visual. Okay, fantastic. I am great. Where's the where's all the active learners here? Ah, fantastic. Okay. Um, 
So I'm glad to see that so many people already kind of feel uh, this kind of active learning kind of situation. This is something I'm kind of really interested in. How do people actually go about learning? Okay. So I'll say a kind of bit more about this later, but um, what I'll say for now is quite often people say, oh, I'm a kind of very visual learner. Uh, I like kind of just watching things. But what I'd like to suggest is that the way people actually learn things is uh, with this kind of active learning. Okay, so you have to learn things by doing. Um, so if you think about those other activities that people did, a piece of music, whether it's a soprano singing or gymnastics or golf or guitar, you can't learn those things by watching someone else do it. Okay, you have to be actively practicing those things yourself. I think especially you know things like gymnastics. You could watch someone doing gymnastics all semester. You're not going to learn any gymnastics yourself. Okay, so learning physics, it really is exactly the same. Okay, so. In the lectures, in the workshops, we're going to be kind of very actively involved with learning physics there. Okay, so I'm really glad people went for um, active already, okay? And if you feel a bit more like uh, you kind of like watching things, okay, we are going to start a bit more with the kind of traditional lectures. And as we go on into the semester, okay, we're going to be getting more and more active, okay? So the last thing that I want to show you guys for now. Okay, so I'm um, coming up in uh, 10 minutes in the square, okay? So the Physics and Astronomy Society, they're doing a campus tour and then drinks at the SU bar, okay? So everyone uh, is welcome, not just if you're doing uh, physics, okay? Uh, does everybody know where the square is? You know, the bit where you can get food and, and the bar again? So uh, what I'd suggest, um, Head over to the square, do the campus talk, um, and then you can go along for some drinks afterwards, okay? I'm going to have um, the first office hour at 3.30 um, this Thursday, okay? Um, otherwise, I'll see you all uh, next Monday. So, same time, but over in science uh, for the first lecture. So, thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Okay.